so on today's episode we're fishing with steve grant of diamond fishing products a couple times a year i get to get on the boat with steve and do some fishing with him and you might remember him from last year we shot a grouper show and he absolutely loved it well this time i'm going to his ballpark and we're chasing high speed wahoo So Steve is really, I mean, when it comes to wahoo fishing, everyone over there on the East Coast, Jacksonville all the way down, know him for wahoo fishing. I mean, he's been doing it for so many years and I just can't express how excited I am to get on the water with him. All right guys, well, we made a pretty good little run here. We still got a good ways to go. We ran in the dark for a while. I'm here with my good buddy, Steve Grant. We're gonna be high speeding for wahoos today. Yep. Uh, looks like we got some great conditions. Uh, couldn't ask for much better weather. Uh, we're going to do one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, and that's drive real fast and try to catch one of the fastest fish out there. So uh, a couple guys had some uh, good days yesterday, so hopefully we got a good day today. Absolutely. Every day is different, but we're hoping for some big ones, and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Stand by. So when you're headed out wahoo fishing, especially high speeding, I mean, you can expect to get four or five or six bites in a day, and that's a great day. Um, but with Steve, he was super excited about the moon, the tide, the weather we had lining up. I mean, it's took us a long time to be able to do this shoot because we've been waiting for all the ducks to line up and today they did. All right guys, we're getting all set up here. We're getting our first rod out. Basically everything we're gonna be using from the swivel, the lead, the lures, everything's made by diamond all the way down to the line. Um, Steve's gonna kind of go through what we're doing here uh, as we're setting up on our first spot. All right, well, uh, guys, today we're going to be trolling five lines at a time. And uh, our shotgun line, or the longest line behind the boat, we really like this white over blue Thunderstruck lure. It uh, caught quite a few fish for us last year. And this bait's going to be about 350 to 400 feet behind the boat. And we'll start getting a little bit closer. As we get in closer with our other uh, leads and lures, we'll go, we'll go up in size. So uh, today we're going to start with a 32 ounce on the shotgun. And then we'll do another 32, a 48, a 64, and our, uh, our prop wash bait's gonna be an 80 ounce. So we're gonna start getting these things out. Let's see what happens. So when you're high speeding for Wahoo, especially running five or six lines, it's very important to have your line marked and how far you're putting that bait out, what ledge you're using on each rod. So when you're turning or even if you hook a fish and he runs, you're having no break offs, you're not getting any big tangle ups. So we mark our lines with rubber bands when we let them out. So we know we have a rod at 100 feet, rod at 150 feet, rod at 225, 275, and the shotgun at 350. You're, you're never getting a tangle. And I mean, it's absolutely incredible to be trolling 15, 16, 17 mile an hour, and the lines are just absolutely working perfect together. Now for Wahoo, kind of like to keep it between about 12 and 16 knots. Uh, right now we're doing 15 and a half miles an hour, so about 14 knots. And every boat's a little different. Uh, you kind of need to dial them in sometimes by uh, trimming the, uh, the trim tabs down, the motors up, trying to keep the boat from jumping on plane and going like 20, 25. So once you kind of figure out where your boat's gonna settle in, that'll be your high speed. Don't get all uh, caught up in what other people tell you that, hey, they cut everything at 17 knots. Maybe your boat doesn't do 17 knots really well. So just something to keep in mind when out here doing this. And we're just coming over our first spot, so hopefully something's about to happen. Yeah, buddy. So when we got that first bite in the morning, it was fairly quick. I mean, we had just gotten out there and when that thing hits, it absolutely screams. They're dumping 300 to 600 feet of line like that. It's one of the fastest bites you'll find. I mean, it is just, especially with you going 17 mile an hour one way and the fish hitting it the other and just screaming. It's a thrill. Oh, 
All right, hey, go ahead and start cranking in the water line. Yeah. Try to talk about moving there, Stevie. There you go. All right, well, right now we're in one of those kind of little bit chaotic fun scenarios. We got two nice fish on. Yeah, baby. All right, I'm gonna ease down just a little bit. And then Brandon, you can kind of start talking and I'm gonna start clearing the deck behind you guys. Johnny, don't stop cranking, you got him, guys. Right in that big ball, too, I mean. Yeah, that's right on. Picture perfect like right there. You lose him, Johnny? I think he popped off. Yeah, you ain't got nothing. No, he popped off. Well, crank it in. Crank it in, let's clear the deck and catch bees fish. Well, we had a double header there just a second ago, and uh, unfortunately, we had one fish that came unbuttoned. But it feels, uh, it seems like we have the larger fish still connected. So right now, I'm just going to kind of ease down a little bit, let this fish kind of run the line that he's going to run out. And it looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like we already got him up. So go ahead and just start cranking B while he's up. All right, well, that was kind of exciting right there. We were uh, just talking about leaving this little area, and we had a double header of uh, what I'm hoping is gonna be Wahoo here. We did lose the first fish, and our second fish, I don't know if you can tell, but we actually have them skipping on top of the water right now. So one of the tricks to this high-speed fishing is if you can get one of those Wahoo on the surface, don't stop cranking because we can actually catch them in a much shorter period of time. So that's what we're going to try to do right now. It's really important here to keep good tension on the line. That's why you see us kind of rotating through. The fish had seven, eight hundred feet of line out. So you really, I mean, you can't take a break, especially with that lead in front of them, any kind of slack and they'll come right off. That's why we're keeping the boat at about nine or 10 mile an hour to keep that fish everything as tight as possible. Even when we're gaffing them, we'll keep it in gear and wire them in and then gaff them as we're moving so there's no slack at any point. As you guys can see, we got the fish on top right here and he's wanting to stay to the starboard side. So when you have this kind of scenario, don't try to pull the fish to the other side of the boat. We're gonna go ahead and gaff them on the starboard side. So as soon as the lead hits the rod tip here, my buddy uh, Johnny is going to grab the leader, start to leader him in, and I'm going to come over the top there and stick him in the boat. All right, walk up the side. Just try to pull him up the side as much as you can. Get in there, buddy. Slow down with him, slow down with him. That's a nice fish right there, boys. All right, hey, check this out. As soon as we got that fish in the boat, he shook the hook out. So it's really important to make sure that you keep the, uh, the boat right going there, forward in the line tight. Yo, nice. that's a heck of a fish right there, buddy. That's, that's what I'm talking fish. about. That's a nice fish. Well, boys, this is what you come to St. Augustine, Florida, right here for. Yes, sir. Big wee -hoos. That fish is lit up. I mean, absolutely awesome. This is what it's all about right here, buddy. We'll spin back around and see if we can get another one. Let's put a couple more in the box. Y'all stay tuned. That's what it's all about right there. Yes, sir. High speed for Wahoo is really different than any other trolling just because of the speed you're traveling at. Uh, it makes a big difference to get that boat your boat and your props and all this stuff have to be perfect because you can't plane off. You want you want your boat level, but going that 15 to 17 mile an hour. So it's pretty tricky fishing compared to the other trolling. So Wahoo fishing, you're going so fast, 17, 18 mile an hour, there's not much to do besides eat, drink, and listen to some loud music. 
and Steve sure likes his music. He had a couple songs throughout the day. There was two or three that he played on repeat. I, it must have been 15 times because he swore those were his big fish catching songs. And I gotta say, a couple of them that he played and he thought were his songs generated some big bites. So trolling six rods for these Wahoo, and it is very possible to get two or three on at a time. And right there mid morning or so, we got a triple header on, and then we got a double header on. It's really tough only having three guys, cause you always have to have one, someone at the steering wheel at all times, and then the other two cranking. So the other fish is kind of just on limp. And with these Wahoo, with the big lead and their mouths, you really have to keep tension. So we did lose a couple fish in that mayhem of having a double or a triple on. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. There we go, boys. Got him on, double header. Double header. Keep going, keep going, baby. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You still on? Oh, shotgun! Shotgun line! Shotgun! I, I think this one's off too. This one's gone. We got one on the shotty. Yeah. Go All right, on guys. We just went through a big ball of bait there and had a double header. Pulled two hooks. Shotgun went off. And now we're thinking we got another double header on. I mean, right, right here, we've got a really hot bite going on right now. Some nice fish. That fish that hit the shotgun, took a bunch of line. We'll uh, stay in them here. Nice one, big, big boil on this one. All right, walk hang back. on, wait. Just walk back with yours for a second, Johnny. I got it. You keep cranking, you keep cranking. Ah, you just came off. God oh. dang it. Oh. That's when we need an extra person. Yeah, well, we just had a double header and we had a little smaller fish that came into the boat pretty hot. And uh, we were there on the leader and was just pulling him up to the side of the boat. And it was a little bit chaotic because we're kind of one man short today. But uh, and the fish ended up shaking the hook and sinking back down. So we'll have to go back and get that one. But we got another one on here right now. This one seems to be a little better fish. The one we lost is about, about a 30 pounder we just lost. So hate to lose the Wahoo though, they're so good to eat. What's that? Five bites we've lost? Six strikes. No, more we than that. We've had we six had, strikes. We just had three right there. We had a double before. Oh, I don't know, man. Seven fish, strikes. Fish are chewing. Seven strikes. Seven strikes. And quite a few come off. They're barely, they're barely biting it today. They're barely hitting the back hook. So, hate to lose them, but part of it. This is why, I mean, on a normal day, we'll have four or five guys on the boat. Right now, it's just me, Steve, and Johnny. So, when you get multiple fish on like that, it makes it very tough because you got to stay tight. Someone's got to be on the reel, the water, and the gaff. So, really, you need three people to get that fish in the boat and have a fourth on the rod. Uh, but. With what we got dealt today, we're just gonna do what we can do and uh, see what we can make happen here with this last fish we got on here. We're gonna do the best we can with what we got and you know, talking about that extra person, sometimes it's important to have a, a driver to speed the boat up and make little incremental turns there at the very last second um, to keep the fish from, uh, from getting off. But, but we'll make it happen. You guys stand by here, we're about to get another one. All right, so hey, real quick guys, sometimes when we're high speed fishing, you'll get a uh, medium sized Wahoo that's hooked outside the face and they'll get back there and they'll start spinning. So you'll think you'll, you'll have a monster on and what you need to do sometimes is slow the boat down quite drastically in order to be able to, to, to get some forward momentum. Because that fish is back there doing this, I'm just gonna take a guess right now that we got probably a mid 30s fish and uh, like I said, he's hooked outside the face, so he's gonna be spinning, so. All right, guys, here we go. We got a fish here at the back of the boat. He's barely hooked. Yep, I got you. 
Yep, go ahead. Turn to the left. All right, so right now we want to turn to the left to try to keep the fish in the clean water. And I'm just trying to keep his head up and just ease him on in until Johnny can stick him right Pretty there work, and throw him in the boat. There we go. Another nice fish right there, guys. Woo! Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Turn the crank, Hank. So as you can see, this fish was hooked outside the face and he started to spin back there. So it took us a little bit of extra time to get him. But another nice fish for the box right there, guys. Who likes sushi? I like sushi. You like sushi? Woohoo! So I've been over, I go over to the East Coast quite a bit, whether it be Cape Canaveral, Jacksonville, Mayport, that whole zone over there has never really disappointed me. I've never had a tough day of fishing. I mean, whether it's fishing for tuna, mahi, wahoo, it is just a special place to go out and catch a ton of fish. Throughout the day, we had multiple single, double, and triple hookups. And on one of those double hookups, it was just mass mayhem. We were trying to gaff a fish on one side of the boat and he darted immediately to the other side and not having someone on the wheel to be able to make a hard right to get that fish to where we can gaff him. He ended up getting in the props. How we didn't lose the fish, I don't ask me, but we ended up catching the fish. We had him gaffed right on the back of the motors and just had an absolute mess. Um, but it's really important to have that guy driving, have two guys on the rod, because what you have is you have a guy fighting the fish, you have a guy leadering them in, and you have to have a guy gaffing them. So it's really a four person job and only having three people definitely made it challenging at times. All right, so as you can see, we had a lot of chaos right there. The fish was super green. Yeah, I mean, we, we had him beaten two or three minutes and back up seemed like he got hooked on the back of that motor. Yeah, he came to the back of the boat and uh, we turned a little bit too sharp. He was really green and uh, the, one, of the, one of the hooks got hooked in something on the back of the motor and that was a little bit chaotic. But so, he's in the boat now. But he's in the hey, boat. That's a good one to end the day on right there, a little bit of chaos. Uh, it's been an unbelievable day. We had a lot of bites, caught some really, really nice wahoo and I can't thank you enough for having me out here. I appreciate you coming, man. Always yes, there. It looks like we're catching these fish over and over and over, really fast paced fishing and we're getting bites all day, but it's really not like that. Our bite from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock was basically almost every bite we got besides maybe one or two was in that period. So the first three or four hours and the last three hours were really slow fishing for the most part. You're always gonna have that one bite window throughout the day when you're trolling that is just phenomenal fishing. And I've seen that about every time I've gone over there. So you can have some really boring moments, but when it is on, it's some of the most exciting stuff you can do. When we get back to the dock and Steve starts cleaning these Wahoo and gets them on the table, he was so serious about the quality of fish. He really likes that sushi grade and doesn't want anything to happen to it. So he fillets the fish out. There's no water that ever touches the fish cleaning table. He'll wipe the blood off kind of with his hands a little bit um, and really just clean the fish with no fresh water. Keep that grade of fish super, super good. He chunks them up perfectly, bags them up. Um, he doesn't soak them in water or anything like that. And after about three or four days, they make for some of the best sushi grade you could eat. I can't thank all the guys over at Diamond, especially Steve for getting me out on the water. I can't wait to get back over there and do some more high speeding with them, especially so we can eat a few. I mean, it's one of the best eating fish there is. Um, I mean, it is one of my top three favorite fish to eat. I can't wait to get back out there with Steve and do it again. On today's episode, Wahoo Fishing is pretty technical on what we're using here. This is 100 pound diamond yard line. This is a hollow core, but what yard line means, every 50 feet it's going to change colors so you know exactly how far your lure is behind the boat. So when you're turning and things like that, you don't have any big tangle ups. This is a hollow core line, so you'll be able to splice in 50 to 75 feet of this 130 pound diamond illusion fluorocarbon. From there, you're gonna have your trolling lead on, whether it be a 24, a 32, 
Um, there's multiple different size leads that we use throughout the day. Um, your long rod, of course, is gonna have a little bit lighter lead and your close rod is gonna have a heavier lead. From there, you'll use a 24 foot shock leader. This is 300 pound uh, monofilament made by Diamond with the swivels already attached. From there, you're gonna go straight to your lure. We had two lures that were best for us today. As you can see, this one here is pretty mangled up. This is a Diamond Zebra Jet. Uh, this is in the B-liner color. This is one of Steve's favorite colors. I mean, he swore by this thing. And as you can see, it is mauled. Um, we trolled this head and uh, in a couple different colors, the blue and white, anything white was doing really good for us. This is actually a Zack Attack Thunderstruck in the blue and white here's the biggest key they make these in-house in diamond this is a wire double hook i mean an absolute killer the wahoos are not going to bite through this so these two key baits have about i don't know eight feet of wire attached ahead of them because the teeth on these wahoo are so sharp they'll cut your line almost immediately um, but the key baits today like i said anything in white and the B-liner color were absolute killers. The thing about Wahoo fishing, if you need it, Diamond makes it the whole way through from braid, fluorocarbon, monofilament, wire, leads, lures, hooks, the whole way, they have you covered for any of your Wahoo needs.